Harry and Meghan are furious that Carrie Kennedy mistakenly handed out the trophy with the award's ripple of hate. That award shouldn't exist. Hello, friends. Welcome to the breaking royal news about the notorious hypocritical couple, Harry and Meghan Markle, on our Kate Middleton and the Queen News version 2 channel. When somebody gets an award, you expect that it's freely offered to them. We expect they have done something amazing to deserve this award, for service, maybe, or contributions of some sort. In fact, typically people will expect the award to be absolutely free and clear from political interference or corruption of any kind. So basically, no strings attached. But when it comes to Meghan and Harry, mm, not true. Money was given for this award, and that's why they won it. So this award is basically meaningless. It's essentially just an opinion. All right, so let's consider what this award is all about. So supposedly this award is for standing up to racism, systemic racism to be precise, and where? It's located within the institution of the monarchy. They're supposedly these heroes, and they're supposed to be honored for standing up against racism with all of their action, their courage, and their integrity. And I'm sure the money helped a lot with this deal as well. They told the institution and the country as a whole that what they believed in was wrong, but unfortunately they weren't able to further instruct the Crown on corrective action. Without any proof whatsoever, no actions were taken, but I guess their opinions were noted. And there was no further proof of racism shown except in name only. And Harry was never this crusader against racism until now. He learned it from some of the more wild crowds that he parted with over the years. He dressed up like a Nazi, and he called a comrade in the army a racial slur. Nothing, though, was done about his horrible behavior. The fact is, Harry did belong to a community while he was growing up that believed in equality for everybody. And that was what Meghan grew up believing as well in her smaller group in the U.S., but then Harry's going to turn around and say that they were all racist, everybody who was in the institution, those racist people. Harry and Meghan had to turn the tables from themselves to the entire institution. And the fact is, over the course of their lives, Meghan and Harry showed a lot of examples of being racist. Meghan proclaimed herself to be white for most of her life, and Harry took down anybody who was close by with his attitudes, his comments, his remarks, or his attacks. And then they decided to turn around and attack the very institution that helped them figure out their lives. And the truth is, the institution believes in equal opportunity. Racism is about hatred, it's about evil, and it's about anger. And they, along with other people, are willing to sacrifice their lives for their ridiculous delusional ideals. They are accusing the institution of racism without showing any proof. Harry and Meghan are attacking safely because they're so far away. And they think the institution is such a safe target because they'll never fight back, but they might be wrong about that one. Liz Garbus directed the Netflix series, and her business partner is Rory Kennedy, who just so happens to be the daughter of RFK and the sister of Carrie Kennedy. Does anyone smell nepotism other than me? Now it was bad enough that they got that award, but it was when Carrie Kennedy, president of the Ripple of Hope Award, justified the reasons they had been offered this honor that caused a lot of mayhem. According to her, it was because of the way in which Meghan and Harry had exposed and stood up to racism in the royal family. But the fact is, for 70 years, Queen Elizabeth stood up against racism, and one of her most important successes was the way more and more countries voluntarily joined the Commonwealth of Nations. And then, when Meghan and Harry got married, the Queen named Harry the president of the Queen's Commonwealth Trust, and Meghan was named as vice president. That was such a big honor and privilege, and at the time, I'm guessing it was mostly based on Meghan's apparent philanthropy and interest in Africa. And then, during the pandemic, they made a speech together telling members of the Commonwealth they needed to do more to counter the influence of the past. Now, everybody agrees that there is a lot more work to be done, but there are so many people who have done a really remarkable job of recognizing the past and also making an effort to rectify those wrongs. It's not going to be simple, and it's going to be very uncomfortable sometimes, but it has to be done because everyone is going to benefit in the end. So then Megan said, we're going to have to be a bit uncomfortable right now. Since equality puts everyone on an equal footing, it does not put anyone at a disadvantage. This is a fundamental human right. It's pretty amazing that in spite of the fact that they were named the president and the vice president, the couple knew so little about its goals and ambitions, and they couldn't understand what this grouping of 54 countries representing 2.6 billion people really stood for. Now, Meghan clearly wrote that speech, and she thought the Commonwealth was the same thing as the British Empire. 
And it's not like they stopped there with their allegations that the royal family is racist. No, they had to go on Oprah and they announced in front of the entire world that a member of the royal family had brought up the subject of the skin color of their child. Now, for starters, this is not a strange thing to do. They could be talking about the hair, the eyes, the skin, really anything, and especially in a mixed-race couple. But Meghan claimed that it was said while she was pregnant with Archie, and Harry, obviously looking a little annoyed, said that it was before they even got married. And it's very possible that the person who mentioned the color of skin for any children was actually Harry himself. There's a rumor that it was Harry who was wondering aloud if the kids would end up having curly red hair or he was hoping that the kids wouldn't inherit his pale skin. Any one of a number of possible thoughts on the subject. But Harry has failed to just come out and be honest and acknowledge that it was he who did this. And this has left the whole world wondering who it possibly could be who brought up this subject. It looks like at this point everything is tainted by the same brush. What really bothers me about this situation is we have a family who has done so much to foster great relations between countries around the world, and they're being damned by Harry and Meghan Markle, and they're even getting an award for this. This award is a disgrace, and it's meaningless too. It's completely unwarranted, especially when compared with another 2022 winner, Vladimir Zelensky. He has rallied his whole country around him, and he has done a lot more to fight a real enemy than anyone else in this whole generation. So that's why this award given to Harry and Meghan created quite a stir. They haven't done anything notable since they met. They haven't done any good works. They haven't done anything at all except denigrate and attack their own families. And their families have not really fought back. I mean, if this is courage, then I don't want to know what cowardice is. One expert said, It just seems strange that these two are any kind of representation of the worldwide battle for human rights. When they visit places where there are poor and downtrodden people, she's wearing designer clothing badly and expensive jewelry. They get there on a private jet and have an entourage of expensive gas-guzzling SUVs. They bring their own photographers with them instead of hiring a local photographer who could use the exposure. As to the award itself, the winners this year include Vladimir Zelensky and human rights activist Bill Russell. Do we think the publicity given to the royal couple has seriously overshadowed the honor given to the other winners? Professor David Nassau, who's the author of the Pulitzer Prize-nominated book, The Patriarch, uh, that's a book about JFK and RFK's father, Joseph Kennedy, he said, I find it somewhere between sublimely ridiculous and blatantly lewd some, it may be no coincidence that the director of their upcoming Netflix docuseries, Liz Garbus, is a partner in a film company with Rory Kennedy, the youngest of Robert F. Kennedy's 11 children. One Hollywood producer also spoke with the Mail on Sunday, saying everyone has been scratching their heads to try to figure out the reason why Harry and Meghan were chosen to receive this, while they are still in the early stages of their philanthropic work. Perhaps the connection between the Netflix documentary and Rory Kennedy is it? What do you think about Harry and Meghan's Human Rights Award? Do they deserve it? Let us know your thoughts below in the comments section. We hope you have found this video helpful. And don't forget to leave us a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll be back to see you in the next videos. Bye-bye now.